Hi, my name is Jared Stone, and I am a senior technical curriculum developer here at Jitterbit. So today we're going to dive into a tutorial that is part of our Jitterbit Basics series. Now, this series shows you how to quickly connect to your data systems using the Jitterbit Harmony platform. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to use the Jitterbit Harmony Cloud Studio to show you how to leverage Jitterbit's insert activity for using the Salesforce connector and create a very basic operation using that connection. Okay, so we're going to start over here in Cloud Studio, which is accessible from the Harmony portal at login.jitterbit.com. So once here, you see I have a project here. SFDC insert tutorial. I've already created this project, but if you were coming here and maybe this was a blank slate, all you would do is come over here to the right hand side, click new project, and build out some basic information to create that. All right. So over here, you see once I hover the mouse there, I can go down and click view edit to enter that project. Okay. So now I'm in the designer area of Cloud Studio. So we can start building this process. So like I mentioned, what we're going to be doing here is showing you how to leverage the insert activity, okay? Uh, and that is for Salesforce. So what we want to do is start off by making an FTP connection, okay? Because we're going to be grabbing a sample CSV file from our FTP and basically inserting that data to a Salesforce instance over in the account area, all right? So let's go ahead and start by doing this FTP configuration real quick, all right? So on the right-hand side, I'll just search my FTP, there it is. And now I'll just configure this very quickly here. All right, so everywhere that you see an asterisk, that means it is required. Also on the right hand side, you see the V that is within a box. That means you can leverage project variables, okay? So reusability is very uh, a very key part of the project variables. So I could click that, for example, and come down and find my server name, okay? And then come down here and we'll do the username and the password there. Okay, so it's always a best practice to test that connection. So let's go ahead and click that and you can see I have a successful connection. We'll save the changes there. So just that simply, we have um, configured that. Now you can see once we've configured that, we have two activity options here, read and write. We'll be reading. So let's click, drag and drop that over to the canvas. The first thing you notice is that this operation area or block or bubble comes up. So we can kind of define a few things here, maybe like the operation. We could say something like FTP to SFDC. And now we can click into this activity and select edit and view. All right, so coming down here, the file that we want to retrieve is a test.csv file. That's the one we want. And then we will click Next and click Finished. So that's simply right there. Just in a few steps, we have configured the FTP along with the activity. OK, so now let's go ahead and find our Salesforce endpoints. The first thing we will have to do is, con uh, is configure this. So we'll click that Salesforce option there on the right hand side. And we need to populate some information. So starting off maybe with our username. So we'll go down and select that. And then the Salesforce password. And then we have to have the security token for Salesforce. So we'll select that as well. And then test that out. Successful connection, so perfect. All right. So save those changes right there. And you can see, once I have completed that configuration, over here on the right hand side, I have a, quite a few options come up for Salesforce. Like I mentioned in the introduction, we're going to be doing an insert. So we'll click drag and drop that over to the canvas. And now we can configure this activity. So once again, we'll click that and then select view edit. We're going to be adding this record from the FTP. We're going to be adding it to the account within Salesforce. So select account there, then we'll click next. And then we'll click finished. So really, just in a few clicks, we've configured 
both of the endpoints as well as those activities. But now we need this data to communicate with each other. So we'll be building out the transformation. So if I take my mouse and hover it between the source and target, you notice a bubble uh, a block here will pop up along with a plus icon. That will allow me to add either a new script or a new transformation. I'll go ahead and click new transformation there. You can see on the left hand side, the source side, that is blank. Nothing really has been defined just yet, but there on the right hand side is the Salesforce side, okay, where we are sending the data. So I'm going to select the define schema option, then create flat, and then create a few fields here. So I'll click the add field button. And the last one here, let's do our facts. We could rename this if we wanted to here. Um, anytime we're naming something uh, from a production standpoint, it's always good to do this. Uh, name it something that's informative to you, something that is descriptive to you or someone on the team, right? So that helps a lot. But we'll go ahead and click Save Changes here. And you can see this manually created set of fields on the left-hand side has now been created and populated. So what we're going to do uh, is drag and drop a few fields. Now, we can't necessarily take advantage of the auto mapping capabilities in this instance because the field names aren't exactly alike. But we have a good idea here as to what fields are going to be related. So I see things like uh, the city here can go over to billing city. We can take country over to billing country. We'll come on down there, state. So we'll grab state and drag it over to billing state. Zip to billing postal code. We have address to billing street. There's our fax. We'll take company down to name. And then phone over right there. Okay. Another nice feature we have just to consolidate a few things, especially on this right hand side, is the view. So we can click that and just select to show just the fields that we have mapped over. So that helps us out quite a bit there. Okay. So we'll just go ahead and return to this workflow. And now within the three dots right here within this operation, we can click deploy and run. You can see in the upper right hand side, the deploy was successful. And now right here on the left within this operation, it shows us that that has been submitted. And this will also, in just a moment, start running. And then it's going to let us know if it was successful or if it was a failure. Okay, so just as a recap, uh, in this tutorial, what we were doing was we were taking some data from our FTP. We were reading that data and updating our Salesforce instance, more specifically the accounts area within that instance. Okay, so adding an account there. All right. So uh, really quickly, if I were to jump to my FTP, you can see that test.csv file that I uh, was connecting to in this particular tutorial. There it is right there. There's the data that I'm going to add over to the accounts area within my Salesforce org. So if I jump over to Salesforce, notice that I have 29 accounts currently. All I'm going to do is refresh and I go from 29 to 30. And there is that new account that has come over from this insert along with that related data for this particular account. Now, always know that for deeper training opportunities, you can always check out our learning platform, Jitterbit University. You can access this at university.jitterbit.com. Now, you will need an enrollment key to access the training content there. And to get that information, please reach out to your customer success or alliance manager. Well, that is it. I want to thank you for joining me for this micro learning. I hope it's shown you both the simplicity and power of the Jitterbit Harmony Cloud Studio.